Hey guys! A while back, Robert DePlacido of Driftaway Custom Woodworking got a hold of me on Instagram about being part of a project that he's calling the U.S. Maker Project. Now, the premise of this is basically he wants a builder from each of the 50 states to build a custom project of their own that represents their style and their state, and then they'll send them back to Robert, who will assemble a whole United States map out of all of these different parts and pieces, and then he's going to display it at a bunch of local colleges and stuff. It's a really cool concept, so I think you really need to go to Instagram and check out the U.S. Maker Project and see all the cool and creative ways that different builders are tackling the same challenge that I'm going to do today. Now in this video, I'm going to show you the piece that I made that represents Wyoming. Now I got a little carried away in the editing of this one, so I hope you like westerns, because this is the Cowboy State. <laughs> So at first, I was having a really difficult time trying to make this project interesting, because as incredible as Wyoming is as a state, geographically speaking, uh, it's pretty boring on a map. It's a square. I didn't know how to make a square interesting for this United States project. So I thought about it for a long time, and um, as you probably know, most of my lumber comes from my family tree farm in Minnesota and I didn't really want to make a Wyoming project out of Minnesota lumber. So I thought about it for a while and finally decided to use this little fella. This is a piece of red cedar and it came out of my front yard. When my wife and I bought our first house together, we had two red cedar trees, bushes in the landscaping that had overgrown so much that you couldn't even see the front of the house. So the first project I had when we moved in here was to tear these things out and I burned most of them. But because the grain is so cool in it, I couldn't part with the last chunk. And I've had this sitting around since before I even had my shop set up. Uh, I just knew I needed to save this for something, and I've decided this is it. I'm going to cut this up, resaw it, glue it together as a panel, so it's about this size. And uh, then we're going to have my Wyoming State shape, and then we'll see what we can do about making it even more interesting from there. So, let's get started. Well, we've let this glue up dry long enough, so it's time to take it out of the clamps and see what we've got. I really like the way that book match grain looks on this. Uh, I think that's going to just do exactly what I want it to very nicely. Um, and my Wyoming shape, there's definitely room to work with in there so that when I get around to finally cutting it to the last size, uh, I've, got, I've got lots of wiggle room. Now the next step is going to be to flatten this out because we've got just a little bit of separation where those two boards came together. They just became misaligned a little bit. Now normally you would just run this through a planer and in one pass, maybe two, it would be flattened out and you'd be good to go. But in this red cedar, these swirls in the grain, the grain just goes in all different directions and we've got knots and we've got bark inclusions. Putting this through the planer could be almost catastrophic with tear out. It's just going to rip it apart. I know this from experience. So instead, we're going to put it through the drum sander because with that sandpaper it's going to take more gentle passes and we're not going to have to deal with that tear out. So now the next step in my plan is to use this contraption to take the Wyoming logo of a cowboy on a bucking horse and put it onto the piece of cedar. Now I don't have a CNC machine which would make this really simple. I refer to this thing as the poor man's CNC machine. By having an image down low, you can take the pointer 
and draw around on here and as this moves around above the piece of wood it carves out the shape that you're tracing. I've done a test with it already on this piece of oak and it turned out really well. So basically I'm going to take this and do the same thing on here. Um, it's pretty simple. I've had a few practice runs and I'm confident that I can make it work. If I can't I'm in big trouble because this is the last of that red cedar. So let's keep our fingers crossed. I've got this whole jig set up. It's already locked in place. Everything's lined up the way it should be. Now I use this right here to set my depth because what I want to do is draw the outline and then I'm going to switch bits to hollow out just to hog out the rest of the material because right now I have a V bit in there that'll help make the outside profile a little bit more detailed since we have all this detail in the hair. Um, once I get that detail in, then I'll go back through with just a big, bigger, um, it's a quarter inch flat bottom bit to just hog out the rest of it. But I need to get that depth exactly the same. That's where this stack of stuff comes into play. I can just lower that bit back down until it just kisses that, and then we'll be all in the right place. So anyway, I think we're all set to go. Let's, uh, let's make some sawdust. So at this point, I kind of plan on being about done with this, other than maybe throwing a few coats of lacquer on top of it to bring out the grain and to protect it a little bit. But I look at it now and think it's maybe just a little bit plain still. I'm also considering how it's going to go into the full US map and be surrounded on all sides uh, by other states. So I'd like to kind of separate it from them just a little bit more. So what I think I'm going to do is give it a little bit of an edge treatment that I've never actually tried before. So. It's just going to be an experiment and hopefully it, it comes out all right, but uh, I got to draw a few lines and then take it over to the bandsaw. Mm -hmm. 